Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBunch.com. Today we're going to use the uh, Elegoo Mars 3D printer to fix this lovely Waterford crystal clock. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. Okay guys, so first things first, if you want to skip through this part where I actually replace the clock movement or the watch movement that's in this little clock, you can go to the five minute mark and it'll start working on uh, the replacement part that I had to make with my Elegoo Mars printer. So you can skip right there, it's, it's at the five minute position. Here I'm just grabbing a new movement and I'm going to get it ready to put the dial and the movement together. First things first, I want to mark the back side of the dial where the 3 o'clock position is, just so I know this particular movement doesn't fit into the same dial feet on the dial as the original one did. So I've used some uh, dial adhesive, which is basically just double-sided, real, real sticky, thick pads here. And we're going to remove the protective cover. There should be three of them here. Once I get those removed, we attach it to the dial just to line the stem up with the three o'clock position. On this particular clock, it doesn't matter. Now I'll go ahead and set the hands. Uh, if you go back and look at some of my other videos, you'll see where I show you how to replace quartz watch movements. It's the exact same thing here. Putting the hour hand on here, get that situated correctly and just make sure it turns and it does. The next step is to get the minute hand on. So as soon as we've leveled off the hour hand, we'll grab that minute hand, put that on there. Again, under watch repair categories, you can go find uh, how to put hands on quartz watches as well as mechanical watches. You can also go to my website, myjurybench.com, and go to the watch repair section, and you'll see all the articles and videos that I've put up there. Here I'm going to remove the stem and put the movement and dial back into the case for the Waterford clock. And then we'll reinsert the stem once we get this aligned correctly so that I can cut the stem and add the, uh, the crown to it. Apologize for the focus. I didn't get my fingers in the right spot here under the camera. But uh, here you can see I'm attaching the crown to that. Once the crown's on the stem, I'll put that back in there and we'll measure the uh, length of the stem so that I can trim it. Grab the marker, gonna make a line on the stem where I can cut it. We'll go ahead and uh, pull this stem out again just to make sure. Once I get that out, take the crown off, we're going to use cutters and cut along that blue line. And then I'll use a diamond wheel to trim it and file it and then we'll reattach the crown. It's a very, very small crown so it takes a little playing with. Reinsert that back into the movement and it should fit fine by now. You do want to make sure you insert the stem straight into the watch, not at an angle. Okay, time to put the battery on. And then we'll just make sure that uh, once the battery is seated, flip her over and make sure she's running. And if you look closely at the minute hand, you'll see it's very very slowly it is moving so the watch movement works battery's good well, we'll get the spacer back in there and we'll just throw the cover back on and we are done with the uh, little small clock movement which is actually a watch movement
Okay, on to the good part. Here we have to measure the outer diameter of the insert for the clock. And what I find here is 33.3 millimeters. And I'm going to measure the inside diameter, and that's 35.3 millimeters. So I know I have to make a ring that's approximately one millimeter in width and an outside diameter of, or an inside diameter of 33.3. You can see I'm writing my measurements here. And of course my marker is going to die. That's the clock outer diameter. We have 35.3 millimeters for the inside diameter of the Waterford crystal. You're going to need these measurements when you go to, um, in my case, I'm using Blender to model this and then I'll print it on my Alagoo Mars printer. So I'm just drawing a circle just so I have my notes correct, 33.3. However you decide to do it, just make sure you keep track of your measurements. The outside dimensions 35.3 and the thickness we know is going to be one millimeter since there's a two millimeter di difference. So we have to make up that two millimeter gap or that will actually be a one millimeter gap around the entire perimeter. And the last measurement I'm going to need to take is actually how thick uh, or deep to make this. And we'll take that right now. And here we're going to be about four millimeters. Don't mind my crew drawings. I'm used to drawing everything out just from my own visual when I uh, go back. And sometimes I get interrupted, so it's good to have all my notes written down. Okay, let's fly, fire up Blender. And I'm going to delete my first object there. We're going to add in a cylinder. And I'm going to give this cylinder a hundred... Uh, a hundred edges along the outside diameter. I'm also going to change the depth here to four millimeters and we'll change the radius to approximately uh, this is radius divide 35.3 by 2 and that comes up with your radius. I'm just guessing here about 16 and 3 quarters, 17 and we'll go and adjust that in detail as soon as we uh, get ready to go to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to make a duplicate of this object by pressing the, the uh, Shift D, which makes a duplicate. I'm going to size that just so we can use it as our cutout. I'm going to pull up the end key tabs where I can go and look at dimensions here. And this is where I want to uh, modify my inner diameter, which is going to be 33.3 along the x-axis. Additionally, it's going to be 33.3 along the y-axis. The z is the height here, and our, uh, our plug is going to be fine like that. Now I'm going to select the actual ring, and we'll make that 35.3 on the x and y-axis. Next step is to select the first or the, the cutout. So I'll select it here. I'll hold the shift key down and select our insert. Go to the edit tab and then press difference and it leaves us with a filler piece for our Waterford clock. Once I've got this filler piece done, I'm just gonna give a little taper to it and uh, you'll see here in a second, I'm gonna switch into edit mode. Okay, now that I'm in edit mode, I'm going to select the outer vertices by pressing the, uh, the shift and the alt key. I'm going to grab both sides and I'm just going to scale it in a little bit so that I have a little bit of an out outer taper to this so that the top might be a little bit thinner than the bottom. Just makes it easy to slide back into the Waterford crystal. Now that I've got that done, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, export this as an STL file so that we can bring it into our 
slicer. So I'm going to save it on my desktop and I'm just going to call this move, move holder, movement holder STL. I'll make sure I select selection only and then export it as an STL file. Next up, bring that into your sheet two box slicer. We're going to grab that movement holder right there. And there it is. Depending on what resin you're using, uh, go into your settings and change any settings that you have. Um, every time I, uh, on this com computer, I don't have a profile set up, but you can save multiple profiles. If you don't, it'll always remember your last setting. So setting the exposure time to eight for each layer, 0 0.03 millimeter for the Z axis height and uh, 42 millimeter or 42 second exposure time for the bottom five layers. No infill, I want this solid, and I'll use anti-aliasing, although I don't seem to see much of a difference on that with these small parts. Let's get it sliced. And then we'll save it to the USB card. Okay, here's the fun part. What I like to do first is I take a little bit of Rain-X and I spray it on a paper towel and I wipe down the FEP film and then I'll dry it with a cloth just to make sure that uh, nothing's wet inside. I'm just going to wipe off the bottom just because it's my habit. I do that all the time. And we'll get the uh, vat tray all set up. Next step is you have to get the alignment of your build plate set. I align mine each and every time I print. It just makes sure that I have a nice level bed. So when you level it, if, if you're one of these people who can be very careful and you think you're never going to misalign your, your build plate, that's great. Um, I level my build plate every single time I print just to make sure. And I do it with an empty vat right on the FEP film. Once I get that aligned, I'll tighten up the uh, build plate screw and make sure that it's tight in place. Raise it up and we'll grab the white resin. The Waterford crystals, uh, crystal clocks always come with a white insert. So I'm just going to use the white resin to make a new one. This clock was dropped by the customer and uh, the clock broke. The insert got lost and that's the purpose of this. I always wipe off the neck of the bottle just to make sure that the cap doesn't dry up on the bottle. And select our model, hit the print button and away we go. This print took about uh, 25 minutes. So as soon as it was ready, we came back and this is what we had. I keep two little vats. One, the first one on the left is water. The second one is isopropyl alcohol. And what I usually do is I take the build plate off the Elegoo Mars. I'll scrape off any excess resin that's on the build plate into my vat. Try to get a shot of this on camera, but I wasn't very good at it. I apologize. And because I didn't use any build support on this, uh, you'll see that when I actually remove the object, I use a razor blade to uh, cut it off. So let's get the part off the build plate and it's still flexible enough that I can just kind of pull it right off without doing any damage. And here you can see I use isopropyl alcohol to wipe my build plate down. And I'll do that two times, maybe three, depending on the resin I use. With the castable resins, I'll usually do it three, maybe four times because the castable resins have a waxy material in them and they're kind of sticky. Okay.
Now that the build plate's done, we'll grab the piece out of the water and I'll throw it in the isopropyl alcohol and I'll let that sit for a few minutes. And we'll finish cleaning up the printer. For me, this is my step. Even if I'm going to use the printer later that day, if I don't get to it, I always empty my vat back into the bottle. It's just a habit I have. I keep these small funnels around. I'll put links of all the materials and tools I use in the description below. And if you want to get those, those are Amazon affiliate links. I do get a small commission every time you buy something from Amazon from those links. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps to support this channel. So here you can see I'm just using the filter, uh, pouring the resin into that filter. And just If there's any debris in the vat, it just keeps it out of the resin. I always wipe off the excess resin and I'll use isopropyl alcohol. Here you can see I'm dipping my paper toweling into the isopropyl alcohol and I get a good amount in there just to swish it around and uh, just dissipate as much resin as possible. Once I'm done with that, I use the uh, glass cleaner and I will clean and spray down the rest of the vat and that seems to clean up and leave a nice clean film on the FEP film. Uh, just, just for me, it, it seems to work good for me. It's I've been doing this since day one. Uh, I've been doing this four months with this printer and I've never had an issue. Once I'm done with the uh, paper toweling, sucking up as much as I can of the uh, glass cleaner, I'll use a uh, microfiber towel and I'll grab both sides of the FEP film with the microfiber towel just to make sure that I get off any more residue and get it all dried up. Part of my cleaning pr process, and I'm pretty anal about this, just to make sure that the printer's always ready to go. And like I said, every time I get ready for a new print, uh, everything's cleaned. And then all I do is just add a little bit of Rain-X to the uh, inside of the vat and uh, helps keep the sticking down during printing. And again, I'm just gonna wipe down the bottle. If I got any resin dripping down, I'll just wipe that off. Make sure there's no resin on the neck so I can put the cap on and not worry about uh, any resin drying up and drying the cap onto the bottle. And there's our part. It's been soaking in the isopropyl alcohol. It's not that bad. It's pretty clean. I could probably throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, but it's not going to get any cleaner. And it's a small piece. doesn't have a lot of nooks or crannies. Once I'm done with that, I'll just cover everything up, put it aside. And we'll throw this in the UV light curing box. Um, this is a 30-minute UV nail cure box that I got. It was $22, $23 on Amazon. I'll put a link below. This thing works phenomenal. So now that I'm done, now it's time to make sure this all fits. And this is my first shot, so we're going to see how it works. Make sure it fits perfect. And it does. My measurements came out good. Uh, Blender and the Alagoo Mars work really well together. And we're going to just do the final assembly here. Push that little clock mechanism into the crystal. And then I'm going to shake this upside down, make sure it doesn't fall out. And this customer is going to be very happy to have their Waterford clock back. So that's how I use my Elegoo Mars as a watchmaker and a jeweler and uh, make little parts for little things that go missing or break. Um, sometimes you can't get these quickly or... Uh, you just don't know which size to make it you know I can make this for what 15 cents so if you like this video guys give it a thumbs up uh, check out the uh, items in the description below and share on social media it all helps me take care guys
Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.